Hey everyone and welcome back to part number two of this lesson series on driving south by the stone roses. Thank you so much for watching part number one. I really enjoyed reading all of your comments. If you'd like to get involved in the channel and vote on my next lesson, please click the link to my Patreon page. And with that in mind, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. All right then, let's jump straight into the guitar solo. This is gonna be a really quick part. We're gonna be doing loads of hammer-ons and pull-offs. You might find you need to reference the song as we go through this lesson because it gets quite confusing with all the notes that we're playing. Anyway, I'm gonna break this down into just a few parts, starting with part number one. It just sounds like this. We are going to be starting with the open A, hammering on to the second. We're then going to move over to the open D, hammering on to the second and pulling it off. We're then going to go back to the second of the A, playing that and pulling it off. And from here we're going to do a little riff on the low E string at the third fret. It just goes like this. We're gonna play the third of the E and then pulling that off twice. Then we're gonna play the open E, then third of the E pulling it off, then the open E. So we've got. And to finish that off, we'll go back to the third of the E, playing that once and pulling it off. So far we've got this. And I'll just do that again. We're then gonna go around a second time. Again, open A, hammering onto the second fret. Then open D, hammering onto the second and pulling it off. We'll then do second of the A, pulling that off. Then third of the E and pulling that off. From here, we're gonna go back to the open D, hammering onto the second fret and pulling it off. And then we'll do the same thing on the A string, but twice. Then finally back to the third of the E, playing that and pulling it off. Moving into part number two, we've got this. And this is where things get a little bit confusing, so you might want to reference the song after we learn this part. We're going to start with the open A hammering onto the second fret, then we're going to do the open D hammering onto the second and pulling it off, and we'll play that three times. From here, we're gonna play the open G, hammering onto the second fret and pulling it off. Then we're gonna play the open G again, then hammering on and pulling off the fourth fret. We're then gonna go back to the open G, hammering onto the second fret and pulling that off, and we'll do that a further three times. We're then very quickly gonna play the open G again before playing the open B, hammering onto the third and pulling that off. We're then gonna play the open G, hammering onto the second and pulling it off. Then we're gonna do the open D, hammering onto the second and pulling it off. Then we'll land at the second of the A, just playing that and pulling it off. So that last part. And I'll just do that again. All together, part number two sounds like this. Part 
bars. One and two together sound like this. Part three sounds like this. And for this, we are going to start with the bend on the second of the G, playing it once. We're then going to bring it down, play it again, and bend it up a second time. This time, we're going to bring it down and play it unbent, then open to the second of the D. We'll then play the open G and go back to the second of the G. So we've got We're then going to move over to the high E string sliding up to the 5th fret Then we'll go to the 3rd Then 5-3 on the B We're then going to do a quick run We're going to play the 3rd of the B again hammering on to the 5th 3rd of the high E then five pulling off to three on the B. Afterwards, we're gonna play the third of the B again, hammering on to the fifth. And we're gonna play that another four times. Afterwards, we're gonna play the third of the B, then open B, hammering on to the third and pulling it off. So all together, part number three. All together, parts one through to three sound like this. Moving into part number four, we've got this. And this part will make a little bit more sense when we play it alongside part number three, but we're gonna start with an open G, hammering onto the second fret and pulling that off twice. We're then gonna play the second of the D. And then we're going to go back to the second of the G, playing it, bending it up, and then playing the open B. And we'll do that twice. We're then going to play the second of the G unbent, open, and second of the D. From here, we're going to play the open D, hammering on to the second and pulling it off. We'll land at the second of the A, then play the open D, second of the A, to first, to open, to third of the E. So that's... And I'll just do that again. together parts one through two four sound like this For the remainder of the solo, we're going to be moving much higher up the neck now. We've got this left to play. Part 
live sounds like this. And for that, we are going to be starting at the 12th of the B. We're then going to flatten our index finger and play the 12th of the E. From here, we can move to the 14th of the B. And then we'll move back to the 12th of the high E. This time, we're going to play it, hammer onto the 14th and pull it off. We're then going to play the 14th of the B, moving back to the 12th of the high E. From here, we'll go back to the 14th of the B. We're going to play that, pull it off to the 12th and land at the 13th of the G. And then we'll do the 12th of the B, moving back to the 13th of the G, pulling that off to the 11th. So together we've got and a bit quicker moving into part number six we've got this And for that, we're going to start off a bend on the 14th of the G. We're going to start by playing it, bending it up, and then bringing our index finger over to the 12th of the B. We're then going to go back to the 14th of the G, bending it up again. This time, we're going to use our index finger to play the 12th of the high E. We're then going to go immediately back to the 14th of the G. This time we're going to play it and do a much quicker bend. We'll play it, bend it up, bend it down, then we'll pull it off to the 12th and land at the 14th of the D. And we're going to do that twice. We're then going to do another bend immediately at the 14th of the G. This time we're going to play it, bend it up and down quite quickly. We're then going to pull it off to the 12th and land at the 14th of the D. And we're going to do that twice. So together that's... From here, we're going to play the 12th of the G, then to the 14th of the D and 12th, then 14 to 12 on the A. So together, part number six. And parts five and six together. Moving into part number seven, we've got this. This time we're going to bar the 12th of the B and E together and we're going to play it three times. We're then going to play the 14th of the D climbing up to the 12th of the E. We're then going to do a bend on the 14th of the E, bending it up and down and then pulling it off. From here, we'll play the 14th of the B, going to the 12th of the E. Then 14th of the B, pulling off to the 12th. Then 13th of the G, pulling off to the 11th. So together. So far, we've got this. Moving into part number eight, we've got this. For this, we're going to play the G and B together at the 14th fret. We're going to play it once and then pause. Then we're going to play it two times. Then we're going to pause and then play it another one time. We're then going to move over to the 12th of the G and B together. 
Then we're gonna play the 12th of the G and B together again. This time we're gonna hammer on and pull off the 14th of the G. From here we're gonna move over to the 14th of the D, pulling that off to the 12th. Then to the 12th of the G, and back to the 14th of the D. Once again, all together so far. Moving into our ninth and final part, we are gonna go down to the 11th of the G, playing it, bending it up. We're gonna hold it, then bring in our pinky finger to the 12th fret, and we're gonna play the 12th of the high E, then the 12th of the B, letting the notes ring out. We're then gonna play the 11th of the G and bend it up a further four times in quick succession. Then we're gonna bring it down and play the 9th of the G twice. All together, that just goes up this. So the last thing we need to talk about is the ending guitar solo which happens in the closing stages of the song after the fourth chorus. Now we're going to be based around E minor pentatonic so I'll just show you the scales quickly for that one. And for the sound then you could even throw on some phaser or chorus or maybe some flanger to go along with the overdrive to make it a bit more interesting. It's really up to you at that point to um, create whatever you like. I think it's fairly open to interpretation. I'll just show you the scales, they go like this. riff is quite busy and so playing a guitar solo over the top of it might get a bit congested so it might be a good idea to focus on playing long drawn out notes maybe doing lots of guitar bends particularly at the 12th fret with our pattern one pentatonic all kind of ideas like that have an experiment with it and see what you think so that concludes my lesson on Driving South by the Stone Roses. Hopefully you got on okay with the guitar solo. I know some of the rhythmical elements are quite tricky to grasp. I couldn't recommend enough pausing my lesson and then going to the original record as you work your way through the solo. I think that will really, really help. Usually I have the backing track available, but I couldn't find one for this particular song. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you guys on the next lesson.